on our and other maps. The world is colorful and diverse. There are different trees, metropolises, cities and villages, high mountains and deep valleys, large animals like elephants, and various landscape elements, continents, oceans and rabbits. No place is like the other. Also, the world is constantly changing. Nothing ever stays the same. And people don't just stand around, but shape and recreate the world too. In order to orient themselves in this mess, people make maps. Maps have been used for a long time and for various purposes. Today, maps are everywhere in our lives. Digitally, on smartphones, in navigation systems or on computers. As dusty wall maps in schools in front of which dusty teachers give dusty lectures. On holiday as tourist maps in which oversized symbols of known sites obscure entire streets. Maps portray the world and help us to find our way. They show us how to get from one place to another. They contain information about certain places or regions. Or they show us relations between certain places, for example, the trade of Cumberland sausage. Maps are helpful because they display the world in a simple manner. In order to do this, a lot of things that do exist have to be left out. For example, a forest with its diverse creatures is depicted as a conifer. At the same time, the bear and all the other animals and plants cannot be found on the map. The conifer icon equates various different forests on the map. The diversity and uniqueness of each and every forest are obscured in this one icon. Maps depict the surrounding in a simplified and generalized way. They only show a snapshot. In our example, the map does not show what the forest really looks like. It doesn't differentiate between a conifer forest and a deciduous forest. And even less does it tell us which colorful creatures enjoy themselves in the forest. This means that a map can never display the entire reality, but only what it should depict. Who actually makes maps and what do maps do to us? Those who make maps decide what is important and should be shown on the map. Or, put differently, which filter they want to apply to the world, and in doing so, they also decide that the large remainder should stay invisible. That's why every map reflects one certain perspective on the world and the interests of those who made it. For instance, the map app shows us buildings, streets and our own position in it. We use the map in order to navigate in the city. In addition, some places on the map are marked with icons. Sausage shops, malls, famous sites. But perhaps we're not looking for the sausage shop, but rather another place that is not shown on the map and thus stays invisible to us. Eventually, we might still end up in the sausage shop, which we didn't intend to. So, our behavior in the city is influenced by the map on our phones and the people who made this map. While maps conceal some things, another example shows how they influence our ideas of the world. Without thinking, we assume that maps display the world as it is. Just because they contain a compass or a scale or were produced by some experts. For example, a lot of people believe that Greenland is as big as Africa, since many maps display these two areas equally sized. The seemingly equal surface area arises because it is impossible to display a ball on a flat surface without distortion. Therefore, Many world maps show countries near the equator downsized and countries in the north and the south enlarged. In the correct spatial proportion, however, Africa is far larger than Greenland, so that Greenland fits into the African continent about 15 times. Back to the world map. 
The central position of Europe in most world maps seems just normal to us. This world map didn't just fall from the sky. It was designed by Europeans at a time at which European powers conquered large parts of the world and suppressed and exploited the local populations. Until today, economic and political power is concentrated in Europe, and until today, Europe is placed in the center of many world maps. In the same way, this power relation is reflected by the division of north and south and up and down. Since the world is a ball, we could also turn it upside down and look at it that way. People who make maps have certain world views. That's why don't ever trust a map that you didn't make yourself. Can I? Can we make maps? Every one of us has something to say about the village, neighborhood or city we live in. This means you, me, we. Everybody can make maps. Maybe you know where we can get good food. I can show the best places to do sports or to hang out in the evening. She probably knows about public places where we can feel free and encounter. He wants to design a place in town as we dream it. And the others probably know about something else you and me would like to get to know. We could, for instance, come together as a group of neighbors in order to exchange views on our village or neighborhood. And we can collectively make a map. Through our work with the map, we share our local knowledge with others. We get to know new interesting places and we visualize and document this knowledge. We can develop a shared understanding of our surroundings by attributing personal experiences and funny stories to these places. Do you remember how the mayor tripped over her own tie on the marketplace? For sure, but actually she tripped on a banana peel that a kid had laid out there. Apart from that, the map can help us to discover commonalities. Perhaps it never occurred to us how close we live to each other or that we have very similar interests. Based on these commonalities, we can organize ourselves and become active together. As we all love to play basketball, we draw the next court as a meeting point into the map. Now, new people who didn't know about the court field yet can join us. Like that, Mapping can help us to organize ourselves. Of course, maps can help us to plan quite different actions. We decide what is shown on our map. Our problems, our fears. Draw things that annoy you. Pencil things that at last have to change. Our visions, our dreams. Mark where you feel good. Put your wishes on the paper. Sketch in where these are already realized today. The possibilities are endless. Maps help us to orient ourselves in the world. They, however, only depict a small part of reality. We can use maps in order to exchange ourselves with others, to recognize problems, to display and share knowledge. We can connect ourselves through maps and plan actions together. So, make maps and recreate our world as it suits to us. More information and material for making maps on your own at orangotango.info and notanatlas.org.